everyone, Sandra Vale here at Homesteading Ways. And today we are going to be making breadcrumbs. It's really easy to do it and after you've done it a few times you'll wonder why you haven't done it in the past. But you don't know what you don't know, right? Anyhow, I just happen to have a lot of bread because um, I normally don't eat a lot of bread. But Paul does. He, he likes a lot of carbs. But uh, recently he decided he's going on a diet and so the first thing he wants to give up, of course, like a lot of people, are carbs. And so I had a whole loaf of bread that he decided he wasn't going to eat. So that's a good time to get going on breadcrumbs, right? All right, let's get started. Well, I took all my bread and this is just, you know, regular bread from the store, sandwich whatever and I put them on I don't know how well you can see these these little drying racks here are usually you know for cookies and stuff but you can use pretty much any kind of bread you just want to make sure there's nothing on it you know so um no butter or anything else like that just old stale bread a pumpernickel rye sourdough really doesn't matter just get your bread and get it dried out and just depending on how dense it is will give you an idea of how long it'll take it to dry out and uh, this kind of stuff dries out really well in just a few hours and you don't have to be limited to just bread um, over here i happen to have cereal this is uh, rice krispies a little bit of that's left over because now he's not going to eat that either but you can use stuff like um cornflakes or um, like corn checks or rice checks, stuff like that. You can also use um, crackers. We I've used a lot of old crackers in the past, saltines and you know whatever you happen to have on hand that um, you don't want to go to waste. So anyhow, once your stuff is dried, this is a, this is all I have left of my old breadcrumbs. So I'm just going to add to it with this stuff. These are plain. I haven't added anything to them, so that's okay. So you're just going to take your bread, your dried up bread, and if you can, break it up into as many little pieces as you can. And certain, um, certain breads are easier to do this than others, um, especially um, stuff like baguettes or an end piece of Italian will sometimes be harder to break up, but you can still do it. It's not that hard. It's just not as easy as this. So you're just going to take a few at a time. You could do more if you like. This is um, also a gallon size baggie. So get your bread in there. We'll even add some of this cereal. You don't want to try and do like all of it in one huge batch because that makes it a little bit harder. And um, just, you know, close up your baggie pretty well. And then you can use um, a rolling pin, which is what I usually would use or have in the past. Or I got this thingy, and uh, I'm going to do that. And here, I'm hoping you can see this. Okay, I changed the angle there with the camera, moved it a little bit so you could see it better here. So I have my bigger pieces in there, and I'm just going to squish them up like this. And that along with the cereal. The cereal too is really easy, you know, to um, get into pieces. And you're just going to do this until you have it the consistency you want. You can go for bigger pieces or, you know, try and get it into more of a powdery breadcrumb. Now, um, I'm sure if you have an appliance you know, you could do this a lot quicker. You could probably even do it in a blender. Or, um, of course, a food processor. But I don't have any of those. And um, it's just as easy. Well, maybe not just as easy. But I don't have a problem doing it by hand. You see, as I'm doing this, some of them are breaking up easier than others with the pounding. So I'm just kind of going like this. You know, squishing them. That's all you really need to do. And then as you get them to the to the point you, you're starting to like it, just go ahead 
and add more bread or crackers or you know whatever you have just break them up inside the bay here like you did the first batch and keep going okay once you get all of your breadcrumbs crushed up you can be done or you can move on now these are plain breadcrumbs everybody uses them or most people do you know so you can leave them as is one thing um, you might want to think about is when you do buy breadcrumbs from the store do you do you buy plain the majority of the time and if you do then just stick with this but um, when I bought them most of the time I bought Italian and so I'm gonna add Italian herbs and spices to this and there there is no exact measurements for me in here so and um, just so you know I do still have a couple of big ones in here in case you do too just as you see them you can break them up or take them out if you want but the majority of everything in here is really um, smashed down so I'm going to add to mine some onion powder and I'm putting a good amount in there depends really on what it is you're using whether it's strong or not and how many breadcrumbs you have so I have a good amount here so I'm putting a good amount of stuff in so that is my onion powder then I'm going to put basil a good amount of that it's not too strong of an herb especially once it's dried um, garlic powder love that and what Italian doesn't cook with garlic right even though I may not be cooking Italian food I like the Italian flavored breadcrumbs then we're gonna put some oregano and remember this is how much you want and you know um, how how many cups of breadcrumbs you have a little bit of time I always tend to overdo the time so I'm gonna I'm gonna go go slight on this and I think we'll finish it off with just a little bit of parsley here um, maybe a little bit more than a little bit huh I'm gonna just this is parsley I grew myself so I'm just gonna crunch it up make it a little bit smaller I love the bright color of it and I'm good to go if you'll notice I didn't put any kind of salt I um, you could use garlic salt if you wanted or celery salt or whatever but um, I tend not to salt most of my food until I tasted it because um, well Paul and I don't have high blood pressure or anything like that but if I eat too much salt and I actually do love salt I tend to blow up like a puffer fish makes me really retain a lot of water if I overdo it so I try not to and you're just gonna do this you're just going to sit there and mix it really well and you don't have to do Italian seasoning if that's not you know um over here I have a seed mixture and this is Cajun so if you like to cook spicy go ahead and do that use something like this add some cayenne pepper black pepper whatever it is you want to put in there and uh, mine mine is still a little bit on the mild side because I'm never sure what I'm going to use them for could be meatloaf uh, meatloaf for meatballs could be um, pork chops so just think a little bit ahead of time and also you can leave these plain and then when you're cooking a particular meal just go ahead and get another baggie put the plain in there and then add your spices so you know it, it's really versatile you can do it however you want anyhow thanks for watching the video I really appreciate it thumbs up if you liked it um, subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet um, and visit us on social media we're on Instagram and Facebook it was nice talking to you and you take care